I'm Yvonne von der Fimetendorf from the College of Medicine and my research at the University of Kentucky focuses on epigenetics of cancer. I come from Africa, from Cameroon, and I'd never done research before. So I had never seen a pipette, I didn't know what a lab looked like. And so I went to Germany and there I had this postdoc who was great. She was always there, you know, walking through, telling me this is that, you know, this is where you should go. During coal mining, the mountains are shaved. And so arsenic seeps into the groundwater. What has been shown is that that high level of arsenic correlates with high incidence of cancer in the Appalachian region. For a lay person, you can imagine that, for instance, you are in the train station in New York and this very long train needs to come in. So I say my DNA is that long train. That tiny train station is your nucleus. Again, if we're looking at that DNA, uh, that train, arsenic doesn't cause mutations. It changes how that DNA is packed so that factors that need to read that DNA are no longer able to read it correctly and thereby uh, causing diseases. There's a protein known as CTCF. So you can imagine if it has to go through several loops in that train station, that's what CTCF is doing. So it's only one of two proteins that would help make this loop so that this DNA can be packaged into the tiny, tiny nucleus. What we found out was that this protein has zinc fingers and it's been shown that arsenic comes in, displaces the zinc from the proteins. In doing so, the proteins are no longer able to bind really nicely to DNA. So if CTCF no longer binds, then those loops are not properly formed. And it's been shown that it could actually lead to cancer. So is it possible that if we just increase, let's say people are eating things that have zinc, can it outcompete the arsenic in the drinking water that they're having? So we're so excited with that data because maybe this is a non-invasive way of just letting people have zinc supplements or eat things that have more zinc and so that arsenic is no longer able to displace zinc. It's like you have a hypothesis you've read a lot of papers and you think, well, maybe this is gonna work, let me test it. And you test it and it's true. Oh, it's so fulfilling. You're just like, I made this discovery. You know, you're even not believing in yourself, but you're just excited. I have also another student who has worked in my lab for two years as an undergrad, never believing in herself. Unfortunately, it's something that's very strong with women. Um, we always think we're not good enough. She also said the same thing, I'm not good enough. I said, Rebecca, you can make it. And I'll tell you, she brought a project to me, which is a new, very new area in uh, epigenetics, circular RNAs. And she said, I want to study this. If you could go back, test this, and tell me it exists, you'll drive that project. She came back so excited. If when I got this, and you know, so for me, I think I've given her the chance to be able to de develop things on her own. So she actually takes ownership of this project rather than me just giving her the project. At the time when I was applying for uh, positions, that was when they had uh, the downturn in the economy. My mentor at the time, he was just really amazing. But he told me that I should be careful we were I look for a job. You need to be able to believe in your research. If you go to the other places, you're gonna compete a lot with people. And most of the time, instead of building, you're trying to compete, you're trying to publish in the big papers. And so University of Kentucky provided that for me. So with this, it was able to give me time to build myself up, to actually trust in what I'm actually saying, to trust in the discoveries we're making. And I'm excited.